Government leaders in South Africa are halting the rollout of one million doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. New research indicates it may not work against the new coronavirus strain found in the country. Health officials were planning to start using the vaccine this week. South Africa has reported more than one million COVID-19 cases and more than 46,000 deaths. Scientists say the new variant accounts for 90 percent of new cases. For more, I want to bring in CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata, who joins us from Johannesburg. Hi, Deborah. Great to see you. So South Africa was planning to vaccinate people this week. One million doses are set to expire in April. What are government leaders doing now? Well, the decision has been taken um, to not roll out these vaccines after what Professor Shabri Amadi, who heads up the South African trials in South Africa, described as very disappointing results. As you can imagine, they've put their life's work into it the whole of last year. And now the results show that um, there seems to be minimal protection against the new South African variant um, of the virus. Um, but as um, you know, I, I was listening to uh, a previous interview um, that you had, the jury's still out on whether this will prevent serious illness. We know that in young, healthy individuals, this was a small trial amongst low-risk people. It does only provide minimal protection against mild or moderate illness from um, COVID-19. But we still don't know how it will perform against serious illness. So the government has said in the meantime they're going to stop that rollout, which was due to begin this week. Perhaps only around 100,000 will be given us for research purposes to see how it performs. Now, the leader of the South African trial, Professor Shabri Amadi, has criticized this decision. He believes that it's reckless, that it's wasteful, that we have these vaccines in this country and that they should be used and should be given out. Um, and that in all likelihood, this vaccine will prevent serious illness and could prevent deaths. And that is really important, obviously, to prevent hospitalizations and try and bring down um, the terrible cost of this disease. The new South African variant is the dominant variant in South Africa now, and it's created such havoc and devastation in this country. The official death toll is around 46,000, but in fact, experts say probably it's more like 135,000, which makes it one of the highest death tolls in the world when you look at it per 100,000 people in this country. So it's a decision that has been mm. criticized, but one that is still under scrutiny, and we may have further clarity in the next few days. And Deborah, you know, South, this South African variant has now uh, appeared in other places, including the U.S. So given what we now know about this vaccine, this could have repercussions globally. What does this mean for immunization going forward for the developing world and even wealthier countries that, you know, are relying on this vaccine? Tanya, that's a very good question because all along there have been issues around vaccine equality globally. Um, and in fact, if you consider that wealthier nations have already snapped up the lion's share of vaccines, even though they only represent about 16% of the world's population, there is inequality when it comes to vaccines to start with. Now, a global initiative was launched, COVAX, to ensure that developing nations get these vaccines. But most of that money has been put into the Oxford um, vaccine, which is one of the cheaper vaccines. So many developing nations will be receiving the Oxford vaccine. And now that these results where the jury's still out on whether or not it can prevent severe illness, although they're saying in all likelihood it will. And I think that's important to bear in mind. But it's certainly, I mean, in South Africa, for example, where some people may be hesitant to get the vaccine, um, a spanner in the works like this is obviously going to make it a little bit harder when it comes to rolling out those vaccines. Um, what some of the leaders of the vaccine trials are saying is that perhaps Perhaps what needs to happen is two different vaccine shots need to be given. So perhaps one shot of the Oxford vaccine and one shot of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But in all likelihood, what needs to happen is that there needs to be a global strategy for immunization where everybody um, is protected and where perhaps um, what some people are saying is that the focus needs to shift away from herd immunity to protecting high-risk individuals, that that will go a long way to reducing the death toll. Right. And this is for sure a global problem. Deborah, as you mentioned, the government plans to distribute some other vaccines, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer and Novavax. Is that correct? And could there be further mutations um, and might it affect these vaccine rollouts? 
Nobody really knows, for example, how the Pfizer um, vaccine will perform against the variant because it was tested when the variant was not around. The answer, the short answer is yes, there probably will be other variants, um, scientists are saying. In fact, there already are other variants around the world. Um, one of the things South Africa, for example, is quite good at is genetic sequencing, and that's how they discovered this variant. The UK is also good at genetic sequencing. Sequencing doesn't happen to this extent, for example, in the United States. The more you sequence, the more variants will be found. Um, and in all likelihood, the South African variant, the so-called South African variant, probably didn't originate in South Africa in the first place. It's just that it was discovered here. Um, but that's why vaccinations need to happen quickly, because the quicker you can immunize people, the better you can curb the possible spread of mutant variants, because variants are looking for ways to bypass immunity. And so when there is, um, when a huge number of people have been infected, the variant, as you will, will have to find another way to infect infect people, and that's how mutations will continue to happen. So it's in the global interest of everyone to have a global vaccine strategy to ensure that immunization starts happening. Um, Oxford is already looking at developing um, a new vaccine that incorporates the South African variant, and perhaps down the line we're going to be seeing booster shots and tweaks to vaccines. Um, over the years, every couple of years, there may be a new vaccine to cope with new variants. But we're going to have to learn to manage this virus for a long time to come, particularly in developing countries which are lagging behind when it comes to vaccinations. Such a good point that it's in everyone's interest that we have a global strategy to combat this virus. Deborah Pata in Johannesburg, thank you so much for joining us.